Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thanks for joining me for my Try It Out Tuesday. Well, I did a little shopping at the Honeybee Stamp Shop and first I have to say the shipping is super fast. I mean, three days I got my little package. Um, I picked up this stamp set called Piece of Cake. I thought it went really well with our little sweet treat theme this month. And while I was browsing, I found this little bag. Now, I have three sets of blending brushes. I've been wanting to try blending brushes, um, but, but it was the kind of thing, do I kind of thing? Do I need it? Do I want it? But um, the price point on these were great. I don't know if they were on sale or not, but I picked up three sets. This set here is a two-piece set, and the bristles on these are super smooth and soft, my goodness. And the handle is kind of top-heavy, and it's bendable. Um, so I thought it'd be fun just to give it a try, um, considering the price point. I also picked up the smaller detail set um, that's a three-piece set, but the larger set was $8.99 and then the three-piece set was $10.99. So I picked up an extra set for my girls, um, so I thought they could craft along with me. Um, but they're neat and I've been really wanting to try it, so I thought to try it out Tuesday was a great day to do that. So we're going to start off by stamping our images. I'm going to take the little cake pedestal and also in the stamp set there's a little tag which is nice because there's customizable messages you could put inside the tag. But I'm going to ink up my tag and the pedestal with my Versamark ink. We'll go ahead and stamp that and then I'm going to go over both of these with my gold embossing powder. And once I have my panel covered with my gold embossing powder, I'll go ahead and take the sentiment that will fit in the tag that says HB to you um, and melt it all together. I, this way I could see where I'm stamping and it's nice and centered. Now I'm going to bring back my Misty. We're going to flip my panel around and now we get to stamp our cupcake. And I'm actually going to butt them up together. Um, just to save a little bit of time. But I'm going to stamp the flower and then two leaves. And you can see, well, I'm going to use my Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because we're going to color in the images with Copic markers. But you can see when I stamp my cupcake, the icing part and the cake part um, didn't connect. I think if you were to use the, a block, it would be perfect. But this didn't bother me because all you have to do is take a black marker and connect the, the cake part to the cupcake liner. And then this way, your, your cake part's a little bit taller, but that's okay. It's still going to look good. Now I'm going to play a little bit of music while I color. I left the caps out and also I listed the colors up on top for you guys. But when I'm done coloring, I will catch you back. Okay, coloring is all done. So next, I'm gonna take my scissors and fussy cut around each one of my elements. Now, um, they do have coordinating dies and I'll list them down below, um, but I chose not to get them. So, 
since I have my glossy accents out, we're going to use this for our card today. We're going to use it as glue. So I'm dotting the cupcake. And then while I was at the Honeybee shop, I also picked up these cute little gems. They're itty bitties and they're a couple different sizes, but they're called bubble bath mini domes. Um, the back sides of them are silver and the tops of them have like an iridescent hue to them that are a bubble. So they're super neat. So I just placed them on my top of my icing like they're I thought about putting a few on the bottom of my pedestal, but sometimes less is more, so I chose less for that. <laughs> okay, we're going to um, also put a hole in our little tag, and we're going to thread it with some gold twine. So I'm going to use my little hole punch here. This little hole punch is handy dandy. I've had it for a while. It's from Martha Stewart, and if I can find it, um, I'll list it below. But in the top, it has different size circles that will punch a hole, so it's a nice little tool to have. Here's my gold thread. We're going to just thread it through and then we'll loop it and I'm going to tie a bow at the very end. I thought the gold would go really good since I did some gold embossing with this. I'm not going to cut the strings just yet because I don't didn't wasn't sure on how long I wanted them. <laughs> okay, now I thought we'd do something a little fun. I have a piece of acetate here. The, the acetate that I like to use is from Hero Arts. And I'm going to use my paper trimmer and trim down the width of my cake pedestal with the acetate. And then using my tape runner, I'll go ahead and adhere the pedestal to my acetate on the very bottom. Lovely. Okay. Now, after we have that done, I'm, I'm using my cupcake as a, as a guide to center it. And then I'm going to bring in a circle die. Um, to create the dome portion on the very top of my cupcake. But I wanted to make sure I had I, I know where the center is on the acetate. So using my black marker, I'm going to draw a little dot. I'm going to trim off the excess um, just to make it a little bit easier when I trim down my little dome shape. But I'll trim that down and I still have my little black pen mark. That way I know where the center is. So here's my circle die. I'm going to line it up to the height that I want it on my acetate and then using some tape I'll secure that die to my acetate. Now um, the acetate, um, the die here on the acetate is going to give me that dome shape over the top and I'm going to lower it just a little bit. Remove that tape and again making sure it's center and I'm going to lower it just a little bit. Okay, now once I have my tape secured to there and it's centered, I'm going to take my scissors and where I put that dot, I'm going to almost create a V but leaving about a quarter inch right above my circle die and then I'm going to take my scissors and trim around the left and the right. So I'm going to have a funny looking tab on the very top but it's going to be right in the center and then I can remove my die and I'm going to clean up the edges so it's a little more smooth and I have a nice little dome shape. Now I wanted a knob at the very top so I'm going to trim that down and then just kind of curve the ends. And there's my little dome. Okay, I think this looks so fun. Now I'm going to take a piece of masking paper. This is from Gina K. It's Masking Magic. Um, been loving this lately. Normally I'm, normally I'm an inky dinky do masking paper girl, but this stuff works right really good. And I'm just going to use my scissors and the, my, my acetate dome as a guide and create a mask that's the same exact size. Now we get to work on a background panel. I'm going to, this is panel here is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm taking my mask and placing it in the center of my panel. This is another reason why I like it because there's um, a fold line so you could center it and peel and then peel the rest off and that way you, um, you position it a little bit nicer. Okay, I'm using this stencil. This stencil is from Simon Says Stamp and it's called Line Circles. There's um, vertical lines and horizontal lines. So now we get to use our blending brush. I'm taking the smaller of the set, smallest of the largest set and using some Distress Oxide ink, this is Worn Lipstick, I'm going to go over just the vertical lines. And I am going over the mask too, um, just so I don't miss any areas. 
but I'm just going over the vertical lines. And then after we have this done, I'm gonna use the largest blending brush and I'm gonna go over it with my Sheppy Shedders. I'll kind of go heavy over the um, horizontal line circles and then lightly over the worn lipstick circles. But I am really happy with these. I'm so glad I got these. I wasn't gonna get them because if it's not broke, don't fix, you know, with your normal blending tools. That's just the way I kind of think. But I love the way these blended. Okay, so once I have everything blended, I just remove my tape and this is my background nice and soft and subtle. I did trim it down to be slightly smaller than my card base. My card base today is going to be an A2 size top folding card base. I'm going to remove my mask so we have a silhouette of our little um, cake plate with the dome. And then now we get to assemble. Oh no, I'm going to add a little shading. We're going to go a little bit more crazy with our blending brushes. Um, using my cupcake as a guide. I'm using some pumice stone ink and I thought about using my smallest blending tool but it was a little too small. I think that's more for detailed areas. So I'm, like, I'm just wiping it off and then I'm going to go over um, the silhouette part of my my panel here and I'm going to add a little bit of the pumice stone. Now I didn't clean it off too well obviously because some of the warm lipstick is blending in with my pumice stone. Um, but it was a good thing it was hidden by the cupcake. <laughs> so I'm just kind of spreading it out a little bit more. And um, it's hard to see here in, in the camera, but there is a little bit of a shading behind my cupcake. Okay, everything's all cleaned up. Now I'm going to take all my little elements here and we're going to build our little scene here. Now I'm going to start off by adhering my little yellow flower here. We're going to put it to the left of the cupcake and then I'm going to add some dimensional adhesive behind each one of the leaves and tuck them underneath my little flower. And then I'll flip my, my cupcake over and we're going to add some dimensional adhesive behind the entire cupcake. We're going to go ahead and add that to our little silhouette there. I didn't press down all the way because I want to make sure that it was placed in the right area. Okay, now I'm going to add some dimensional adhesive behind my cake pedestal. Now since my yellow flower has two layers, my um, acetate is actually laying on top and it's nice and flush. But just for a little added security, I'm going to take one more dimensional piece and stick it behind the acetate where I'm going to put the tag at. This is going to get going to give it a little added support. I went ahead and added my tag. We're going to trim down the tails of my little gold bow. And I think that looks so fun. I'm going to go ahead and use my tape runner and adhere that to my card base. And now for bells and whistles, I thought to give my dome a little bit more um, glassy look. I'm going to color or er, color in. <laughs> I'm going to use my glossy accents to fill in the knob of my dome here. And I'm going to go around the entire edge of my my glass dome. And then I'm going to do a little curve right above the little rows too, just to give a little dimension. And when that dries, it's going to dry clear. And I also thought I'd add a few little hearts. These little hearts I picked up at the honeybee shop too. <laughs> and if you like the clear droplets, you're going to love these because these are heart shaped and there's three different sizes. So I'm adding three little hearts to my little dome window. And it's, it adds daintiness, but it also is subtle. Um, I'm going to finish it off with my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen around the sentiment and also my cake plate. And that's my card for today, guys. A lot. I think it turned out super cute. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me again. If you're interested in these little guys, I think $8.99 is a great price. I'll list them down below for you. Um, I wish you a lovely day. Thanks so much for joining me. And we will see you again real soon. Bye-bye.